the 7th day of December 2018. Welcome to New Vision TV News around Uganda. I am Ruth Inasijan. These are the stories making headlines across the country. Starting off today's bulletin is a story from Ibanda District. Now one person who presented what looked like signs and symptoms of Ebola in Ibanda District on Wednesday has been transferred to an isolation unit in Imbara Regional Referral Hospital. Ibanda District Health Officer Dr. Bamwini Julius told the media Thursday morning that blood samples have been taken to Kampala awaiting results. Now, Dr. Bamwine said they received a call from the administration of Ibanda Central Clinic that the patient in the ward was presenting signs related to that of Ebola. They rushed to the health center immediately and took him to Mbara Regional Refer Hospital for specialized attention. The suspected victim, whose name has been withheld, hails from Baba Kazo in Kiruhura district. The 52-year-old man had been admitted at Ibanda Central Clinic the previous day following endless abdominal pain and excessive diarrhea. Dr. Bamwine, however, says it is too early to conclude that the patient is sick and adding that blood samples from the patient have been taken to Entebbe Virus Research Institute for examination. The last suspected Ebola case was reported in 2012. Of recent, Ebola has been reported in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Crossing over to Arua District, Arua Municipality by election petition kicked off at Arua High Court with supporters of the former NRM candidate Nusra Tipelo and Arua Municipality Member of Parliament Cassiano Wadri at court. Now the petition, which was filed by Tiperu after she lost to Cassiano Wadri in the August 15th by election, seeks to nullify the election and results alleges that the respondent were duly committed illegal practices and offenses under the Parliamentary Elections Act. Now, the petitioner, Nisra Tiperi, is presented by Barata Virunji of Barata Virunji Advocates, whereas the respondent, Cassiano Adri, is represented by Renato Kanye. Nusra Tiperu, who was the first to be cross-examined, agreed on the grounds of the petition, particularly about fairing of, of voters from the nearby constituencies of Ayivo and Terego. The jailed Cassiano Wadri then, who, was an, who is an independent, was declared winner of the Arum Spite by-election with 6,528 votes, representing 38% of the vote in August. Now, NRM Nusra Tiperu came second with 4,763, representing 27%, followed by Robert Ejiko, an independent with 2,703, representing 15%, and Bruce Musem of the FDC, who was who garnered 1,372, representing 4% of the vote. You're watching the news around Uganda with me, Roth in Asajiba. Let us take a break and look at what is making headlines in today's copy of the new vision. Now, the headlining story today says, what killed Mohanji? Now, his lawyer speaks out the battle he fought and stories are all on page 4, page 5, page 49 and page 52 inside the new vision. All you have to do is buy a copy at only 2,000 shillings. We also have government stats better pension scheme for civil servants and from parliament MPs sexually abused for jobs interesting there and then best farmers to be awarded today the occasion is going to be taking place here the vision group headquarters all you have to do is uh, get to know our time and get to the vision group headquarters uh, inside the new vision we see Traders want justice from Hanji's land matter. Okay, I will pursue my client's case to the end, Mohanji's lawyer says. And then a global trust bank sale argument was signed two weeks before the seizure, says MPs. The stories are all in detail inside to this copy of the new vision. Now the pullouts, we have the best farm, uh, sorry, the best money a pullout. He says he swapped clinical court for overalls. Okay, who is that? The story is right here. And remember, the Harvest Money Pullout is your guide to successful farming. Uh, we see Best Farmers Competition winners to be announced today. So 
if you're among the winners or if you participated in this competition, all you have to do is be part of the uh, occasion, occasion. Then we see coffee farming bridges gender gap, boosting livelihoods. There is so much more you can get from the Hubvest Money Pullout. It is inside the new vision. Buy it and see what is there. From the beat, the beat says Abinacho nears Miss Uganda crown. Will she become Miss World? The beat has the details for you. Moving on inside the harvest, uh, sorry, the beat, it says, I see Pal Magic two months later and about my MTN run. Those are thoughts of Kalunji Kabuye. The story is right here in detail. Okay, crossing over to the sports docket, we see Wing It. And then Mohanji dead. Yes, the story is right there. Uh, Mohanji was a sportsman and we have a story right here. Then uh, Waiswa in Hotress and Mash Tan's cheerleader. There is a lot you can expect from the sports docket. And there are so many interesting headlines inside today's copy of the New Vision. All you have to do is get a copy at only 2,000 shillings. And those who cannot access the hard copy of the New Vision, the link is on your screen. Just subscribe for our e-paper and you can access all the products published by Vision Group. You're still watching the news around Uganda. I am Rothi Nasaitas. Continue looking at more stories making headlines across the country. Now from Luka District. The police in Luka District are on a hunt for thugs who broke into the home of the Minister for the Presidency, Estambayo, and took off with 800 birds. A source who preferred anonymity say the thugs broke into the house located in Busalamo village, Waibunga sub-county at around 5 a.m. on Wednesday. The Oswan Secretary for Defense of Busalamo, uh, Yakuti Basalaki, said this could be the works of idle youth in the area who are suspected to be terrorizing residents. Closing off today's bulletin is a story from Mukono District where the government has handed over Namataba Technical Institute in Mukono District to a Malaysian University of Limkowik. Now the two-year-old institute has been offering uh, certificate courses in welding, fabrication, motor vehicle mechanics and construction. Officiating at the handover, the State Minister for Higher Education, John Crivesto Muyingo, said the new University of Creative Technology would start admissions in 2019 to 2020 academic year. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more news updates and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website, which is www.newvision.co.ug forward slash video. You can also catch us on our social media platforms. Facebook is The New Vision. Twitter is at New Vision Wire. Instagram is at New Vision Wire. And our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Catch up with me on my Twitter handle. I am Rothy, the voice. Thank you for watching. See you next week.